Hello, I'm Stephen Young from Scottish Land and Estates and thank you for uh, inviting me to speak to you today. Scottish Land and Estates are a not-for-profit member organisation. We have members right across Scotland covering all areas of rural life and business. We advise on a range of topics and try to provide leadership for our members. Members are everything from small family farms to large estates, including NGOs and institutional landowners. Our members are involved in all aspects of rural business and are key elements in the communities alongside traditional industries such as agriculture, forestry and tourism, also providing housing, wildlife and conservation and are large rural employers. The rural Scotland land is often criticised in terms of climate change, but is also key to the solution as long as we use it properly and understand it. We know that our emissions from the likes of agriculture and forestry with fuel, machinery, fertiliser and chemicals, also livestock production with methane. Sadly, we also see emissions from degraded peatland and soils in some areas. However, we also have huge potential as carbon sinks. Trees and soils and peatlands can all sequester large quantities of carbon and the use of natural fibres such as timber for building and construction and wool will also help to lock up carbon for the long term. In terms of land management, it's important to understand all aspects and what is being asked of us. Like all industries, we've been asked to reduce emissions, increase carbon sequestration and increase biodiversity. But on top of that, we also have to produce affordable nutrition, maintain the rural economy and provide wellbeing services. No other industry has been asked to solve all of these key issues at the same time, so it's extremely difficult to understand that and just pinpoint what is needed to be done. It's very much like a Rubik's Cube. Measuring success to a single metric of any one of these will lead to failure. And that's one of the dangers with a net zero lens, is that we only look at one aspect when actually we need to look at all of these at together. In 2019, we published a discussion paper, Route 2050, which is available on our website. And it was really looking at the clarity of goals and a joined up approach that we need to get to what we want to achieve in 2050 and laying out the steps taken that we need to take to meet the changing needs of society and land management in Scotland. Central to this was clear direction on rural policy and agricultural policy which matches the ambition of climate change policy, the long-term thinking that's required to make changes to meet this. We looked at public and private funding models to incentivise natural capital development, what we need to do to encourage that behaviour and also to encourage people to invest in it for the future. And also greater integration between siloed sectors. For too long agriculture and Forestry have not worked together and we have tourism and other industries in there as well. We need to understand everything in the round and work together to, to move forward. It's very much about the right activity in the right place at the right time. All activities are relevant and have a role to play, but we need to think about how we do it. So greater integration of land use, how woodland and agriculture fit together. Rewilding, what areas are suitable for this and what type of rewilding are we talking about? And regenerative agriculture, new techniques to help restore the soils and produce low carbon um, products. Regional land use partnerships which will be coming into life next year will help to, with this decision making as long as they're given the tools to do that and the incentives to help people create change. And for all of this will require greater cooperation both in terms of listening to each other's opinions and working together to form solutions but also in terms of resource efficiency making sure we're making full use of the resources we have. Things like natural fibres. We also need accurate and usable data which allows management decisions to be made and sensible buying decisions from consumer right through to business so that we think about how, how we buy affects um, the, the wider economy. And also better relations between urban and rural. Too often there's a tension between the two and there's not a crossover of, of uh, requirements but it is important that we work together and understand each other's point of view. One of the things that Scottish Land Estates are involved with is Wildlife Estates Scotland, which is part of a pan-European accreditation scheme which encourages best practice, builds information and engages with public and private stakeholders in Scottish biodiversity. An example of this, as you'll see from the picture, is the Rottle Estate, which is a working estate which is farming, sporting, tourism and is also a wedding venue. Uh, but there's work being done to re-meander the Rottle Burn, there's riparian planting being done and there's a huge amount of data gathered on life above and below your feet. WES gives the assurances of best practice and clear guidance for improvement where it is needed. Peer learning and working together also helps us to, to change practices. Our annual Helping It Happen Awards highlight all of this and the innovative thinking that's going on. The picture here is of the Walker family from Barnside Farm in the Scottish Borders. They're tenants and have researched widely across the world and implemented regenerative farming techniques such as mob grazing, soil management, as well as changing genetics from, with cattle from Wales, sheep genetics from New Zealand, which really suit the system and allow them to produce top quality organic products. Sharing of best practice and new ideas really helps to embed change. 
I do think, as I mentioned earlier, land management is very much like a Rubik's Cube, arguably as is climate change. It's important we look at it from all sides and fully understand the impacts of our actions. COVID has taught us the interconnectivity between health, business and the environment. We need to learn from this now and make changes for the future. Thank you.